It is time for the second semifinal bout in the women's single elimination 135 pound tourney as grappling guru Hitomi Akano clashes with capoeira specialist Karina Dam. Olá, meu nome é Karina Dam. My name is Karina Dam. I am really happy to fight with Strike Force. All of the time I want to be close to my brother. It's not just brother and sister, it's coach and student. Respect and everything. In Brazil I have no female sparring partners. Always have to spar with men. I believe I'm much stronger because I fight with men and have more power. I always fight with my cousin and my brother. I come to the United States to show everyone, to be the champion, to train hard, to fight hard. I'm going to beat everyone. It's possible to be, to be the champion. And fighting out of the blue corner with a record of 15 wins and three losses. Five coming by way of knockout, six wins coming by way of submission. She weighed in at 135 pounds. She specializes in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, representing American top team and Dom fight in Via Vea, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the cage, Karina, Beauty of the Beast, Dom. Well, Karina Dom has had to navigate some turbulent waters to get back to the United States. This is her first fight since testing positive for steroids in April 2008 in California. She says she did nothing illegal. She feels that she was never given a fair hearing by the California State Athletic Commission because she was the first female fighter to test positive. She thinks they wanted to make an example of her. And now, well, she has a full team of nutritionists and doctors to make sure she doesn't violate any rules. If that's not enough, her return to the U.S. was nearly spoiled due to visa issues, but they were worked out at the 11th hour. Well, she needed those worked out because she's going to need to be on mark here against Akano, and she's going to get things done with that crazy capoeira okay. striking to go for a takedown. And she can win either way by knockout or submission, but she's got her hands full tonight with her Japanese opponent. Her opponent is known as Girl Fight Monster. My name is Atani Akano from the Abiyani Combat Club in Tokyo, Japan. I came here to win the Strike Force tournament. That's the only reason I am here. And I hope all female viewers who watch my fight will gain some type of courage and a positive mind from it. And that's what I am hoping to provide as well. I consider MMA a competition. So I am training in MMA. Of course I would like to see my results in a fight. So I am in MMA to be number one, which means I have to win. I want to win both fights in submission. That's what I am hoping for. And fighting out of the red corner. Here tonight with a record of 15 wins and seven losses with 12 submissions to her credit. She weighed in at 135 pounds. Go, go. She's a submission fighter, specializing in judo, representing AACC in Tokyo, Japan. Please welcome to the cage, Hitomi, girl fight monster, Akano. Akano may be familiar to Showtime viewers as she moved up in weight to take on Christiana Cyborg Santos, the current Strike Force women's 145 pound champion. She ended up getting stopped in the third round, her only loss via form of knockout. But boy, she showed a lot of game and a lot of what's known in Japan as the Bushido fighting spirit, taking on, let's face it, one of the best fighters on the planet. Yeah, and what we call here in the United States as heart. But besides Hart, she's got that judo background, and the clinch is definitely going to be her friend in this particular match against Dom. She doesn't want to stay too far on the outside and wait for one of those kicks to land upside of her head. She wants to get that hip toss and fall down into side control and work for one of those arm bars that Militich talked about at the beginning of the show. By the way, the song you hear? is Hitomi Akano singing. She's an aspiring singer-songwriter, so a very multi-talented woman as we go to the tail of the tape for this second semi-final tilt. Akano, five years older, same in height, same in weight, same reach. Let's see what happens. This tournament semi-final bout scheduled for two three-minute rounds. Three judges will score each round using the 10-point must system. The winner 
of each round gets 10 points. The loser, nine or less, based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and cage control. We're scheduled for two three-minute rounds with referee Neil Sarimba in charge of the action. You ready? <coughs> you ready? Misha Tate waiting to face the victor. She went the distance against Mayu Kuyala. Karina Dom looking to extend her win streak to 11. She said that Akana, one of the more unorthodox fighters in the tournament. I think Dom's style can be also described as unorthodox. Waist lock takedown. Looked like Akana was going to try to roll through, perhaps. See Akana hunting the leg right now. She's trying to get her leg in between. Nice, nice roll. Reverse. Good sweep, but there's Dom using her strength to roll right back. Hunted the key lock there also. Japanese fighters are notorious for looking for leg locks and then following up to something else well, this, when they miss it. This Japanese fighter is notorious for looking for arm bars. 11 of her 12 submission wins have come via that form of arm lock. She's got Dom locked up with a closed guard and she's going for overhooks there, but she's going to want to see she opens that guard and slides those legs up so quick that she's always going to be a danger from the bottom. <laughs> Dom want, not wanting to uh, sit up at all and ex expose her arms. Seems like she wants to stay tight the whole time. Dom, of course, no stranger to the ground, a BJJ black belt, trains with her brother. Strike Force veteran Rodrigo Dom, very well rounded with 11 of her 15 wins coming via stoppage, six via submission. Four of her last seven victories have come via form of knockout. Akano's working hard down there, but she can't seem to break free to create enough space to start working for submission. Dom doing a good job of staying tight. She wants to shrimp her hips. Dom doing a good job of controlling, posturing up a bit, stacking Akano. Trying to sneak in the triangle. Oh, there it is. Part of the problem for Akano is the fact that Dom's upper torso is so short, she can't get her hip, her feet under the hips. Okay, stop, stop, let's go. Up again, up again, up again. Up you get, up you get, up, 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 up. I think that's an appropriate uh, stand I don't think Karina Dom is happy about that. Kick. Oh, oh. back fist by Dom again. Likes to utilize a nice takedown. Beautiful by headlock. Akano using that side headlock into the takedown and now in the half guard of Dom. Dom finally on the bottom and Akano is really going to enjoy this position if, can, if she can maintain it. But look at Looking look for at the Dom. foot lock. Oh, there it is. She's going for that figure four. Got to break that guard free though. She's going for the foot lock right there. It's a figure four. Carry on, carry on. Ten seconds. Carry what on. is going on with these referees? Five seconds left. And Akano looking for the submission and there goes the bell. Too much interference. Next Saturday night, it's a strike force extravaganza on Showtime with two world title fights. King Moldawal defends his light heavyweight title against the dangerous Fei Zhao, and Tim Kennedy faces Jacare for the vacant middleweight championship. All this and more coming up next Saturday night, beginning at 10, only on Showtime. Pretty good action by both in the first round. Dom. Basically, well, being given her back, uh, Akano making a mistake and uh, missing missing the strike and then getting taken down. Here's Dom. Akano was looking for the leg lock, then recognized she could flip her. Then looking for the key lock. You can see Akano's very experienced with submissions. Spinning back fist connected. Luckily, that didn't connect a little lower. Foreheads made the take impact. The jaw's not. Okay, let's go. Second and final round, only three minutes left. Strategy, very important. And again, both of these athletes known predominantly for their grappling, but again, Dom looking to uh, put on a dramatic display with the spinning back fist, catches Okano on the way in. Setting up a throw again, she's trying. Dom doing a good job of sinking her hips. She better keep them lower, she's gonna get launched. 
Oh, I like that. She used her own defense against her. Dom scooted forward and then leaned back, and O'Connor was all over it. Sagged her hips right into her. Dom secures half guard, utilizing an active guard here, trying to sweep O'Connor, who's being controlled right now with just two minutes, 10 seconds left in the fight. The winner to face Misha Tay to advance via unanimous decision over Mayu Kuyala, and O'Connor trying to break the guard. Doing a good job prying with that left foot to create space to try and get her right leg out of there. Now trapping the arm. But there's Triangle the strong coming. Dom comes oh, over. Omoplata. Akana looking for the shoulder lock known as the Omoplata. I'm sure Dom can defend it well, and she does. Lands a hammer fist and now into the close guard of Akano. Nice defense to get out of that, but Akana was on the offense. That should score points with the judges. Should being the operative word. <laughs> Less than 90 seconds remaining in this, the second semifinal bout for the first ever Strike Force One Night Women's 135 pound tournament. Akano now. Beautiful side. Top side triangle. That is the top. Akano submits Dom in beautiful fashion. Wow. Out of nowhere, she takes out the black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And that is her 13th victory via submission, improving to 16 and 7. And Megumi Fuji E, who improved to 21 and 0 last night in Florida, celebrating with her good friend. In fact, it's funny, Megumi Fuji E introducing Akano to MMA when she ran into her former college teammate years ago and said, Hey, you're, you're getting kind of heavy. You got to start training. Well, the rest is history. She's on her way to face Misha Tate in the final for a chance to vie for the 135 pound title. Dom throwing that spinning back fist again. That cop wearer background definitely showing through in this fight. There's Akano trapping the arm and then transitioning to basically the Uma Plata trying to get that, that uh, shoulder lock on Dom. Dom doing a good job getting her legs over and coming out cross sides. Good escape by the BJJ black belt there. Nice setup on the triangle. Akano being very persistent. Got the triangle started and here she is cupping the elbow, pinching with her, her shoulder and her neck to trap the fist and then pinching, cupping with her hand to lock the elbow out. Here it is again, very persistent, stretches the legs, comes over, cups the elbow right away, pinches it with the trap, and the neck gets the submission on a BJJ black belt in a three minute round. Very impressive, Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end at one minute and 48 seconds of round number two with the fighter tapping out. She is the winner by way of submission, Hitomi Akano. Who says experience doesn't count for much? The oldest uh, participant in the tournament and Shu Hirata joining us, the translator. First of all, congratulate her on the win and tell her to describe uh, how she was able to submit the BJJ Black Belt Dom. えっと、カリーナをあの、一緒に返そうとした I just used Karina's reversal technique to use put into my position. So she tried to escape it. I went with her flow and I got her into the armbar. How does she feel? Very, very happy. What about Misha Tate? What do you think about that matchup? Misha Tate As, uh, when I fight Misha, I will submit her and win by Ippon. All right, let's hear it one more time. Your winner via submission, Hitomi, girl fight monster, Akano.